Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my series on using Cura. And in this episode, I'm going to take a look at using Cura with Clipper. So let's go ahead and get started. For anybody that follows my channel, it's become pretty obvious that at this point, I'm not really running any printers that are using Marlin. I've switched almost everything. I have one printer that's still running Marlin. And when I get a chance, I'm going to upgrade that printer. I already have a replacement board and a replacement hot end. So I'm going to change that all up. But right now, Clipper is my main driver for most of my printers. And I really like the features. I like the configuration. It's a little bit more fiddly to set up initially, but once I have it set up, everything just seems to work. And configuring it, updating it is a breeze. Now, out of the box, Cura will work with Clipper. Although, if I go over and look at the preferences and look at printers, and let's look at my sample here. You'll notice under G code flavors, Clipper is not vested. Now, that really doesn't matter. If you leave it set to Marlin, everything should work. The only areas you might have some issues, and this is a difference between Orca Slicer and Prusa Slicer. If you look at the, again, going back, I shouldn't have closed that. Going back to the machine settings, the start and the NG code tends to be a little bit different. So you might have to look that up and figure it out. If we go over and are looking at the Clipper macros that I often use, there's actual special code that needs to be used. And I need to leverage this post-processing extension and customize it a little bit to do some finds and replaces for some code so that way everything will work correctly. Now, that brings us to under this extension, one of the powers of Cura is the ability to install community developed plugins. If I go to the marketplace, there are dozens of awesome plugins you can download, install, and use. One of those plugins that I've become a real fan of is the Clipper Settings plugin. And if I go over to the marketplace and search for Clipper, I'll have two different extensions, the Moonraker Connection extension or plugin, and that allows you to connect directly to your printer, and then the Clipper Settings plugin. And let's open up the web page for that and take a quick look. So I've gone over to the GitHub page for the plugin. And if I scroll down, let's just take a look at some of the key features. So it adds the tuning tower calibration that's, that's used in Clipper. It has pressure advanced settings. Firmware retraction, the ability to either use retraction as it's set in your slicer or just pull from retraction that's set directly in your firmware. It has some C offset controls, input shaper controls, velocity limit controls, and then some experimental features. If I look at the actual plugin and I can access this via the Print settings, I want to go and go to the hamburger menu, make sure I've checked all so I can see all the settings. And you can see here's the various features. So if I enable the tuning tower, I have the various presets here I can load and use. And these again are common in or Clipper, one of the common tests. I can change the different factors that are used. So I have some power here. Now the area that I tend to use this plug in the most is the pressure advance. So once I've calculated my pressure advance, 
I can go in here and put those settings directly into the slicer. As of right now, I don't have this set for this specific printer, but that's okay. So I can add those in at a later time. So I have pressure advanced smooth time. I can enable some other features here, the Z offset controls. So let's hit that. And you can see, again, as I check these boxes, this turns on the various features. So again, you can set the velocity limits, the square quarter velocity, some pretty awesome stuff. Let's take a look at the input shaper controls. So I can put in those values directly into the slicer rather than having them in the firmware. I personally use them in the firmware. And then lastly, there's experimental features. Now I'm not sure what's under here, so let's take a look. So has the bed mesh calibration, and then also UI support for preheating. And reading that, it looks like I can load and detect uh, print temperatures, preheating print temperatures set via the G code. Okay, pretty interesting stuff and pretty powerful. So if you're using Clipper and using Cura, I'd go ahead and install this plugin as sort of a must have. So that way you can adjust some of your settings. The setting in my mind that's most important here having access to is that pressure advanced control. And that's something you definitely want to set to help with the way your models print to get them more accurate and get those corners much, much more crisp. So hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one-hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me, and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.